Your forecast first, sponsored by Matax Heating, Cooling, and Plumbing. Uh, have you noticed things getting a little strange out there? Well, you can blame it on the moon, at least for tonight. Full moon. There it is in the night sky. Notice it kind of looking a little murky there. It's because we've got cloud cover that is hindering some of the more clear views that you may typically have. And there it is on the satellite picture. You can see those clouds. As we get into the overnight hours, it's going to remain pretty mild. So some nice viewing out there for that with temperatures that are in the 70s. We're back up to the mid 80s for highs tomorrow and what looks to be a great looking weekend. We'll talk more about when rain will be returning to our area when we come back here in a little bit. Stick around. WCI3 News starts right now. Now from WCIA3 News. The person accused of inciting a riot on Sunday is now in custody, and he's facing charges in a much bigger court than Champaign County. A lot of us didn't really see this as the kind of place where a demonstration like this could succeed. But it did, and this protest grew bigger than some even expected. A lot of events have been canceled because of COVID-19, while some are still holding out hope. You're watching your local news leader. This is WCIA 3 News at 10. Dozens of Champaign businesses were damaged on Sunday by looters. Now a teenager is facing federal charges accused of inciting it. Good evening, I'm Jessica Coons. 19-year-old Shamar Betts of Urbana was arrested in Mississippi by U.S. Marshals this morning. He's accused of posting this message to Facebook calling for a riot at Champaign's Marketplace Mall after the death of George Floyd and posting they would also move to businesses on Prospect and Neal. 50 stores were damaged by vandalism or looting over the course of several hours. Betts is facing charges of using the internet to incite rioting. If convicted, he could spend up to five years in prison as well as pay a quarter of a million dollar fine. In addition to federal charges, police say he's also facing charges in Champaign County for burglary. Now, a majority of acts sparked by Floyd's death have been peaceful. We've seen it happen in Champaign-Urbana, Decatur, and Springfield, and today in Tuscola. A couple dozen held signs at the corner of Prairie Street and Route 36. WCIA3's Jen Lask shares their message. He was out here by himself, and um, I think we all found it really inspiring. That's when Marnie Leonard says the protest grew to two people, then a few more after that, and by the fourth day, a couple dozen people. A lot of us didn't really see this as the kind of place where a demonstration like this could succeed. But supporters say it has. I did not expect to turn a lot like this, especially people I know. My best friend came, and I felt, you know, deeply touched. Honked in support as they passed by, and a Tuscola officer dropped off water to help protesters stay cool. High schooler Alyssa Williams says protests like these are important because they're helping people understand the meaning of Black Lives Matter. You don't spray water in every house in the neighborhood if one's on fire, so I mean, I think this is something that people need to hear. When you say Black Lives Matter, you're not saying that white lives don't matter, so it's really important to listen to and uplift um, black voices, especially the black voices in our own communities. Carlina Patterson, a rising freshman, is one of the younger voices taking part. Everyone is raised differently and like some people are just raised to hate black people for some reason, but the more people that start rising up with us, more people will side with us. Educator Kathy Mannon says she's proud to see so many young people holding signs at that corner. They are the future leaders of our communities, um, and they have lived experiences that we have to honor and lift up. Manon calls the students change agents. They see the injustices um, to the black community, and they, they want to affect change. And it all starts one sign, one protest at a time. You can just, you know, do so little and so much at the same time. In Tuscola, Jen Lask, WCIA 3, your local news leader. Organizers say they plan to hold more protests in the coming days. A teacher's aide in the Mattoon School District is being investigated for using a racial slur several times in a Facebook post. The superintendent tells us, quote, Mattoon Community Unit School District 2 shares concerns regarding recent comments made in a post by an employee on their personal social media page. The comments made by the employee are not representative of the district's values, goals, and vision for
for our students, staff, and community, end quote. While that teacher is being reviewed, others in central Illinois have resigned or have been fired for making similar comments. Experts say the digital world can serve as a way to hold people accountable. Canceling or even doxing, which is where people will uh, find out where somebody works and um, start messaging their bosses saying, hey, this person said this terrible thing. Um, you know, they should be, you know, do you want somebody like that representing your company? And then those people can lose their jobs. Lincoln's fire chief apologized for reposting something that alluded to shooting looters. In his apology, he said, quote, in today's world of social media, what one may find cute, amusing, or funny can conversely be found offensive or hurtful by others. And some are calling for the firing of a registered nurse because of a threat on Facebook. An OSF employee in Peoria made what people say is an insensitive comment. The post reads, quote, if I'm driving down the road with my horse trailer behind me, no matter who you are, if you're in the road protesting, I will run you over. I will not stop. I will not break. I will not hesitate. I'd rather go to jail than have you injure or scare my horses, end quote. OSF responded with this, quote, the person who made that comment has been immediately suspended and a deeper investigation is underway. Other news tonight, the man who killed a woman in Muhammad more than 10 years ago will spend the rest of his life in prison. Michael Henslick stabbed Holly Cassano to death in 2009. Today, the judge heard arguments from the Champaign County State's attorney and the defense. To close, Henslick himself gave a long statement defending himself and his character. He claimed he isn't guilty and says his only regret was not stopping whoever did kill Cassano. Cassano's mother says this sentence is the result she wanted but doesn't feel justice can really be served. I feel sorry for his family, but his family still gets the opportunity to talk to him and write to him and know that he's somewhere. So on the other side of that, I still have the thinking that it's still unfair. Casano's mother says she wants to create a law called Holly's Law that would force suspects to go through a DNA test in a courtroom as soon as they're brought in as a suspect so they can't evade arrest for as long as Henslick did. The U.S. Department of Justice is federally indicting a Tuscola man on attempted child sex crimes. 55-year-old James Russian faces charges of attempted child enticement, attempted child sexual exploitation, attempted sex trafficking of minors, and attempted downloading of child porn. Russian is accused of contacting undercover FBI agents and offering to pay to have sex with an 8-year-old girl they claimed they had access to. We spoke with an expert about how child sex trafficking is evolving with social media. But what we're seeing uh, on a more regular basis is um, at-risk kids who, um, who maybe... Um, uh, don't have a cell phone, or don't have a, a happy, secure life at home, don't have all the things that they want, um, possibly a runaway, uh, possibly pe kids who are having issues at home, um, and then they get approached by these people who um, take advantage of those situations for kids and, and offer to fill in some of those gaps that kids um, and teenagers might have. Russian faces anywhere from 10 years to life in prison if convicted. We have new information on remains found in Vermilion County back in April. The coroner has identified the person as 31-year-old Anthony Rausch of Paris. The remains were found in a field in Indianola. Officials were able to make an ID through DNA testing. His death is being investigated as a homicide. And we have an update from last night. We now know the name of the man who drowned in a pond on private property south of Allerton. Crews were called out to 100 County Road North. First responders say they got a call that 44-year-old Christopher Pratt was swimming when people living there saw him struggling and called 911. The property owner says Pratt is a friend of the property's caretaker. Now, there have been three drownings recently in central Illinois, so now experts in water rescue are issuing a warning. The Corn Belt Fire Protection District suggests staying out of certain bodies of water because they're just more dangerous than pools. If someone is in distress, if they're in that water, you can see them readily. And you just don't have those things when it comes to open waters like ponds and lakes and, and especially rivers. Uh, rivers obviously have current. Um, that creates a whole other set of issues.
The district usually has a dozen water rescue calls during the summer and already has had three so far this year. More people continue to test positive for coronavirus, but this time a positive test came from a pet. Plus, some county fairs are already calling it for this year, while others are waiting a little bit longer before making a decision. And later, Illinois coach Lovie Smith broke his silence on the death of George Floyd, what he's asking people to do.